Hey guys, Dr. Jeff with DebtFreeDR.com. Today, we're going to get into what it takes to invest in hotels, and I've put together an ultimate strategy guide for you. A lot of information, so what I've done, I've actually broken it up into two parts. Part one is today. Let's get going. The great Albert Einstein once said, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. Speaking of crisis, I don't think anybody could have ever imagined the type of crisis that we or actually the entire world would have, would have experienced in 2020. Now, in February of that year, just before the U.S. was shut down uh, by the pandemic, the Dow Jones, February, was actually trading at an all-time high of just about 29,000. Now, what happened only a month later after the shutdown, it actually dropped to 19,000. And most medical and dental practices, we were actually mandated to shut down. Now, here in Louisiana, we were out of commission for about two months. Now, during that downtime, I was actually able to connect with hundreds of physicians, dentists, chiropractor, chiropractors, a uh, couple of physical therapists. And the majority of them, the majority of them, of course, they were scared, like all of us, but they didn't know what to do now at that point that their only income source was gone. Now, unfortunately, many of them panicked and they actually ended up selling, you know, the ones that were in the stock market, they ended up selling while the market had dropped down to this low. Thus, what they did, they actually locked in their losses. And what happened was this caused them, remember about the crisis and the opportunities, that this caused them to miss out on a huge opportunity because in, of, in August of, of 2020, the Dow actually went back up to 28,000. So it, it went back up almost to the, the pre-COVID shutdown or pre-pandemic um, range. Now, the, the one thing that I realized during um, you know, a lot of this, you know, especially for myself, was I needed Personally, I needed to focus on growing our passive uh, real estate investment portfolio much larger and much faster. Now, I understand that it's human nature to get caught up in you know, any madness and panic and fear and anxiety that you know, a lot of us are, you know, if we're reading social media or the news or if we have friends or family, or whatever, everybody's freaking out. And I understand that what happened in early uh, 2020. I mean, nobody is, you know, first time that, that something like that had ever happened, at least in our age, the last hundred years. So even though many investors, they sold their holdings, there were others that actually capitalized and gained a tremendous amount of wealth as they were able to sit back and see, maybe there's an opportunity in front of me, okay? So speaking of opportunity, Let's talk about what the pandemic actually did or how it affected the tourism industry and how we could potentially capitalize on it. So we all know, again, that the world screeched to a halt in early 2020 and the majority of the businesses were affected. As you can imagine, one of the worst sectors that this occurred in was the hospital hospitality and tourism industry. Think about it. Who wanted to get on a cruise ship or a plane during that time? Most people didn't. You have to understand that, yes, this was a major crisis, but again, it has presented itself with several unique opportunities within the hospita hospitality and travel space. So as you can imagine, restrictions on travel resulted in occupancy rates at hotels to dive, to plummet. We traveled in June or July, I think, of 2020. And at that time, what we were seeing in the summer of 2020, the average daily rates at hotels was less than 70%, while the occupancy rates, they hovered uh, somewhere around 12 to 15%. So the, uh, you know, the, the financial impact on this industry has caused, or it, it, it caused many hotel owners, still is, to either do two things. So the hotel owners either have to, number one, refinance their properties, or number two, they have to sell 
and many of them they're having to sell at a huge loss. Now, this increase in the amount of dis distressed hotels hitting the market, again, it actually opens the door for potential new opportunities to capture the benefits of these quality properties that we're starting to see. Now, these new deals actually ap appear to be very well poised for strong returns. So as more people begin to get out of their house and travel because what? They've been cooped up for a year. Their, their kids are ready to go. Everybody's ready to go. You can expect an increase in both of the ADR and the occupancy rates. So finding a hotel investment opportunity in the right areas that are actually managed correctly can really generate some very, very attractive yields. So what I want to get into very quickly are the four ways that you can today invest in hotels. All right. Number one is hotel REITs. Okay. REITs are real estate investment trust, which is one of the easiest methods that busy professionals can add real estate to their portfolio passively. So with a REIT, you're actually buying a stock in a company that invests in commercial real estate. This could either be public or private, and it's very similar to if you were going to invest in a mutual fund. One of the main advantages that attracts investors to REITs is that you're able to buy, buy or sell shares at any time. Thus, what it does, it actually makes your money very, very liquid. So for instance, if you needed 10 to 12,000 bucks, you're getting ready to buy a boat. Well, you could go online, log into your investor portal, sell off the shares, get the money in a day or two. That's what attracts many people to, to REITs, you know, in general. All right. Number two is crowdfunding, crowdfunding uh, platforms. Many of the really larger crowdfunding platforms, such as Fundrise, um, I think maybe Roofstock too, and a few others, are actually now offering investment opportunities in the hospitality sector. Now, these investments are open to both on these crowdfunding platforms. They're open to both accredited and non-accredited investors with a low minimum. Again, this, this attracts more and more investors when they do that. So even though I know that crowdfunding is, is becoming more and more popular, I personally no longer invest in these due to losing my tail a few years ago uh, with a, a website, a crowdfunding platform called Realty Shares, which is actually has gone under. If you want to learn more about my experience with crowdfunding and what happened, you can go to my blog, debtfreedr.com. There'll be a search box in the top right. Simply type in Realty Shares. You can read all about it. All right, crowdfunding was number two. Number three is direct purchase of a hotel. So similar to purchasing an apartment complex, you could go out on your own and you could buy a hotel property directly. Now, as you can imagine, you would need millions and millions of dollars of capital and a source that would be willing to finance the remaining with the debt. Busy professionals would have a hard time of not only coming up with that kind of money, but also when you go this route, you're, you become an active investor as your main responsibility is going to be managing a lot of the daily operations, which is why you don't really see many physicians, dentists, et cetera, just going out and, and on their own and buying a, a property, a uh, hotel. But uh, it is, that is one of the ways that you could do it. And last but not least is my favorite investment in uh, real estate, passively, of course, is the syndication, the hotel syndication investment. Now, this option would actually appeal to the very busy professional that they want to focus their time and energy doing what they do best, whether it's treating patients, practicing law, whatever. So they're, they're focused on getting up, doing what they do best, what they've been trained to do, yet they can still invest in a hotel business to get uh, passive income. Now, hotel syndications, they're set up very similar to what you're probably familiar with, apartment syndications, multifamily, as there is the GP or general partner, and they're the sponsor group. And then you've got the LP or limited partner, 
which is you, which is the passive investor. The sponsor or the hotel ownership group, they're the ones that would actually go out and find, identify these properties. They would get the financing, they would purchase them, and then they would eventually manage them either themselves or they would have a, a group come in and manage the property. Now, as with most syndications, these deals are for accredited investors only with a, a minimum investment, you know, on the low end, 50 to 75,000, some of them may actually be a hundred thousand dollars. It, again, it depends on the group that you're investing with and it depends on the property. The cool thing about this is you, the limited partner, once you start investing in syndications, whether it's uh, hotels or multifamily, what you do, you put your money in, you pool it with others, and then you sit back, you relax, you do what you do best, and you receive quarterly distribution checks during the whole period. And for these investments, pretty similar whole period length, uh, anywhere from probably four to seven years. So that's it for part one of the ultimate strategy guide to uh, invest in hotels. Part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into all the different reasons that busy professionals such as yourself should consider hotel investments and how it can improve your tax situation and your income situation. If you haven't already, hit the little red subscribe button and also click on the, the bell notification. And what that will do is any video that I produce, you'll be the first one to get it. Again, I'm Dr. Jeff with DebtFreeDR.com. Take care.